Today, I'm excited to talk with Ken Law and Stephen Chandra, two good friends of mine. Ken serves as the director of the Taiwan Initiative and Stephen as the as Reach Global's Asia Division leader. Both have an intimate knowledge of the region and know the gospel need there. Ken and Stephen, it's great to have you with me today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Ken, let me start with you. Uh, now, many people in the United States aren't aware of the gospel need in Taiwan. So how would you describe the spiritual climate in that region? You know, Kevin, that is a very important question. The need for the gospel in Taiwan is huge. Now, most people in Taiwan follow a mix of Buddhism, Taoism, and ancestor worship. If a person accepts Christ as Savior, he would likely face immense pressure from his family member if they are not Christians. Uh, as you mentioned, about 4% of the people in Taiwan profess themselves as Christians. But the leaders in Taiwan, the church leaders, told me that only about half of them are true followers of Christ. So the, the, the need is there. Now, uh, generally speaking, I would say the people in Taiwan uh, care very much about spiritual things. And that's why they, they go after the idols. They worship all the idols they can find. But it does present us with the opportunity. If they are interested in the spiritual things, they would be interested in the gospel as well. So hence the, the, the reason to, to, to uh, communicate with them. Although the, the church has been around there for many years, a great amount of work, gospel work has been done in the past. But Kevin, the church has faced pro facing problem. The growth is very slow in Taiwan for the church. I would not say the church is in revival mode, it's in a, a difficult situation. Stephen, the EFCA has partnered with several free church denominations in Asia. So how did these partnerships come together and how have you seen them be such a valuable part in leading this Taiwan initiative? Yeah, uh, back in 2018, uh, I became aware of the spiritual challenges and opportunities in Taiwan. Then I connected with Ken Law, then was the president of EFC China who shared a similar vision for Taiwan. And then you remember, Kevin, we were together in Hong Kong for 130 years uh, anniversary uh, over there, where we traveled together to uh, China uh, to see the earlier work of uh, EFC China. During that time, uh, several leaders in Asia met got together, including you, and every day we talk and the vision for Taiwan is kind of growing. I remember Ken always say in the morning, Stephen, uh, the more I think about Taiwan, the more I feel I like it, the more I feel that God is moving uh, the vision in me. So, so those are a growing sense toward Taiwan's vision. So then including you, Kevin, the leadership of EFCA America also sends a call towards Taiwan vision. So collaborative discussion among EFC leaders in Asia and EFCA and Rich Global led to a focus in Taiwan. And then in March, 2019, these leaders met in Penang where a shared vision for Taiwan spiritual needs emerged. And then vision trips to Taiwan uh, further refine our focus. So after several vision trips, years of consistent prayers and engagement with local leaders, our initiative has honed in on establishing the work in Taiwan. And, and especially in the last several years, we feel like uh, the lead to establish bilingual churches. So, you know, the, this, Bilingual church plan will serve as a foundation platform, if you may say, for evangelism, discipleship making, uh, and also a uh, launching pad 
as, as uh, can say, for a broader outreach and global missions. Well, Stephen, I remember that trip and I remember the interactions and conversations we had as we saw the Lord stir in the hearts of each one of the partners from uh, from uh, the church there in China and Hong Kong and and the other uh, the other denominations in Asia as we began together to work toward this initiative. It's been exciting for me to see the true collaborative partnership that yes. uh, that we're able to do together. So, I, Ken, what what do you believe will be the most effective gospel ministries and outreach strategies there in Taiwan as you think about building the team? You know, Kevin, we as as Stephen said, we spent a few years looking at the situation, praying, visiting the people there, and based on our research and the discussion we have with the, the church leaders over there, planting bilingual church is uh, the most effective way to reach out to the Taiwanese people, and by by bilingual, I mean it's English and Mandarin. Now. Taiwanese people are increasingly interested in the English language, particularly because the government has announced that Taiwan will become a bilingual society in, uh, within 10 years. And so people are excited, but there are not that many bilingual churches. There are some, but they focus on the foreign people who, who vi visit China, uh, visit Taiwan or work in Taiwan. The local Taiwanese people do not have the ex, uh, opportunity to be exposed to a bilingual environment. Now, that's why when we approach some churches there, uh, they are excited. And in fact, several Taiwanese churches have already expressed keen interest in partnering with us to plant bilingual churches. And they will say that Ken Stephen will contribute the Mandarin pastor. You give us the English speaking pastor, and uh, we'll form this new church. You will lead the you will lead the new churches. So so they're excited. Now, um, in addition to partnering with the local churches, we we also want to plant our own bilingual churches to reach out to the area where uh, no local churches are available to partner with. So it is, uh, it is actually quite exciting uh, at this point of time. Uh, the, of course, the problem now the, that we're facing, as you mentioned, is to recruit English-speaking pastors. And not only do we need English-speaking pastors, we also need other ministry workers, such as counseling, English tutoring, and community outreach. So we need a whole bunch of people. Stephen, in light of the fact that the Taiwan Initiative's greatest need is to have missionaries and ministry leaders that would come to Taiwan and serve there, as Ken has shared, what, what kind of roles could these leaders serve in? What, what gifts and skills would they need to have to come and be a part of the team there? Yeah, uh, as we look into the bilingual churches, one of the main thing that we need is a church planter, English speaking church planters. And yes, we work together with other, our brothers and sisters from Hong Kong, from Singapore, and from Malaysia. And, and most of them, many of them speak English. But it's interesting when Ken and I were there, we interacted with, with the leaders over there. The number one choice they like to have is, is American English speaking church planters. <laughs> because the people in Taiwan really like American and American English. You know, uh, you know I, I guess one of the things is, we believe is that is only the first, the first step. So, so but, but, but there is a special attraction there, but we need a people with church planting heart. People who really, uh, want to share the love of Christ to other people. You know, Ken mentioned over there, Christianity has been present, but we really want to, to have people to go into experiential level of the love of Christ over there. So evangelism, discipleship uh, making, uh, those who are interested in building deep relationship over there, a gift of uh, speaking, 
uh, give of uh, you know leading Bible study, as well as uh, other supporting. Like we need to have a platform, you know, probably business uh, tutoring, community outreach. But all those things is not for the sake. You know, we can have a coffee shop, but we end up just running coffee shop. But really, we want to have is something that really geared toward uh, evangelism, discipleship making, and church planting. Recognizing the fact, Stephen, that EFCA churches across the country are filled with people who are American English speakers. Yes. How can local church pastors and ministry leaders identify potential candidates in their churches uh, that could be a part of this uh, amazing gospel opportunity there in the Taiwan Initiative? You know, there are several things that I can think of, you know. I think if the churches can see the importance of the work in Taiwan, they might want to say, yes, I want to have a ministry around me in America. But there is a deep need over there. Can I have a church plan over there by sending one of my workers? You know, by challenging that, you know, yeah. if, you know, one church or two, four, five churches send one missionary, that would be great. Yeah. Not only the, the workers, you know, but also the church members, you know, they can say who among you or, you know, we can work on a business uh, opportunities over there where also the, the person can be contributing you know, it's, it's kind of, okay, let's set up a church planting team to start a church planting in uh, Taiwan together with our brothers and sisters from other Asia countries. We really, really in need of workers in Taiwan. I want to picture this, you know, when we see uh, the work in Taiwan, Kevin, you know, we are, I mean, all of us, you know, who are working for Taiwan is seeing Taiwan as a place where we can develop, plan churches, but not only that, we also building a platform for expanding the work, the gospel over there, as well as God willing, preparing Taiwanese for global mission, preparing Taiwan for a Chinese speaking world. You know, when people think people from, I'm, I'm really God work with everybody. Taiwan is considered to be a very neutral groups of people that can go everywhere. And Taiwan is accepted everywhere. Uh, Taiwan passport can be accepted in almost all over the world. So think about Taiwan. Think about you impact the life of people in Taiwan, plan the churches as well as seeing the churches yeah. grow as a global mission. Well, Stephen, you, you and, and Ken, you both have, have shared with us a, a compelling vision, not just for seeing the gospel impact Taiwan, but seeing from Taiwan the gospel impact many other places and the possibility of seeing this multiplicative kind of ministry, evangelism, disciple making, church planning. And, and as, as you both were talking, I, I, was, I was struck by reflecting back on what happened in, 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 in Antioch in Acts 13, where leaders of the church gathered to pray. And then the Lord just impressed on their hearts, set apart for us Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have for us. Maybe the best thing some of our church leaders could do, set some time aside to pray. Lord, how would you want us to be involved? And is there someone from our congregation or someone that three or four EFCA churches together might be able to send? to be a part of that kind of a ministry. Well, we're, we're going to be praying. Amen. Amen. We want to be sending people. We want to be supporting what God is doing there. Thank you so much for your vision and for what God is going to do. And I look forward to hearing what the Lord will do in Taiwan into the days to come. And we'll make sure that uh, people have the opportunity to know where to reach out to, to know how they can find out more information. Stephen and Ken, thank you so much. God bless you as you were launching this new initiative to see the gospel impact Taiwan so that we can see God glorified by the multiplication of transformational churches among all people. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin.